Hello everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. Welcome to another video. In this video, I would like to talk about magnesium and how crucial it is to be taking in enough magnesium. And I touched upon magnesium a couple of weeks ago when I was talking about magnesium as a supplement for sleep. But I want to actually talk about the mineral magnesium now because it is critical for our health and well-being. We don't talk about it enough. Hundreds of different enzyme reactions within the body require magnesium as a cofactor. It is needed for the optimal function of nerves, muscles, for DNA and RNA synthesis. It is important for blood pressure control, for heart rhythm regulation, maintaining healthy blood sugar, and also for a healthy immune system. And we know how important that is. How common is magnesium deficiency in the general population? Well, it's not as uncommon as you may think. In fact, it is estimated that the majority of people in the United States, over 50% of Americans, do not take in enough magnesium on a daily basis. They are deficient. They don't have severe deficiency, but they are deficient, primarily because of a poor diet, high in ultra-processed foods, which are not giving people enough magnesium. However, a well-balanced diet will give people enough magnesium naturally on a daily basis. But do remember that likely the majority of people, either you listening or someone you know, does not take in enough magnesium. And I just told you how important it is for our health and well-being. What are some symptoms of magnesium deficiency? Well, they can range from symptoms including weakness, tiredness, lethargy, muscle cramps, to more severe symptoms, including heart rhythm abnormalities. That is why we check magnesium levels automatically on nearly all patients who come to the hospital with heart conditions. It can be very dangerous to have low magnesium levels. Other neurological symptoms include seizures with severe magnesium deficiency. What is a normal magnesium level? Well, in the United States, the units we use, we like the level to be between 1.7 and 2.2 milligrams per deciliter, ideally as close to two as possible. Now, I routinely check magnesium levels on basically all patients that I see in the hospital. It's frequently shocking how low the magnesium levels are. Sometimes it's in the low ones or even 0.8 or 0.9 with severe magnesium deficiency. And you can imagine the effect that will have on the body. That's why I am a big fan of checking magnesium levels. As an outpatient, magnesium levels can also be checked. You can ask your primary care doctor to confirm your magnesium level. Bear in mind one thing though, that a lot of magnesium in the body is found in cells and in your bones. So blood levels may not always be entirely accurate, but they give you a good initial picture. What are some good dietary sources of magnesium then? Well, there are many foods, thankfully, which are high in magnesium. Some examples include green leafy vegetables like spinach and kale. Nuts are also high in magnesium, including almonds, cashews, walnuts. To go down the list of other magnesium-containing foods, brown rice, oats, legumes like black beans and chickpeas, fish, including mackerel and halibut, dark chocolate. Chocolate lovers will be surprised. Dark chocolate, which is also high in antioxidants, is good for magnesium. Swiss chard, avocado, quinoa, tofu, oats, edamame, artichokes. Those are some examples of high magnesium foods. Now, I personally know that my magnesium levels won't be naturally low because I eat a lot of those foods, but that is not the case for many, many people. But like many other vitamins and minerals, you can't beat getting them naturally if you can do so through a well-balanced diet, rich in real foods which come from nature and low in ultra-processed foods. However, many people do still require magnesium supplementation. Dietary intake may not be enough or they may consistently have low magnesium levels for another reason. There are lots of different magnesium supplements available and they differ in terms of tolerability. Sometimes individuals will tolerate one particular supplement but not another. Bioavailability, absorption of magnesium varies according to supplement type. And I can certainly do a deep dive into that in a future video. But some examples of magnesium supplements include magnesium oxide, magnesium citrate, magnesium sulfate, magnesium glycinate. Again, different ones are often used for different purposes. We tend to use magnesium oxide and magnesium sulfate a fair bit in the hospital. But actually, magnesium glycinate is often better tolerated with fewer side effects, including gastrointestinal side effects. It has better bioavailability and absorption. But again, for most people out there, a healthy, optimal level of magnesium can be obtained through a good, real food, 
well-balanced diet, but it is an absolutely crucial mineral that we don't think about enough. And if you are magnesium deficient, you can get many symptoms ranging from mild weakness, tiredness, lethargy, to more severe symptoms affecting the cardiac and neurological systems. You can easily go and get a blood test done to confirm your magnesium level. Speak to your doctor about that. Thanks everyone for listening. Let me know your thoughts down below. Dr. Sunil Dand, check out my online academy. That link is down below. Hit the like button if you like this video and the bell button for more similar videos in the future. We will speak again very soon.